All right, looks like we are going live. Morning, everybody. Um, I'm just going to uh, check, make sure that all my audio and everything is working and hopefully get some people joining us shortly, which would be awesome. How is everybody? I hope that um, you're all safe and sound and in today's world where we've got all this nasty uh, coronavirus stuff going on. Um, I hope everybody's really uh, looking after themselves and and staying out of the way so that uh, people can get on and, and sort this mess out. Thankfully, hopefully it'll only be a short period of our time. Um, now, let me just check, make sure that this is all working okay. And uh, we'll get started shortly. Let me have a look on my phone, make sure it's working. Oh, let me just yes, it's sure. working. Yay, awesome, excellent. So I think we can probably we'll have some people joining us along along this morning. Um, I know this video is probably more likely to be watched by a number of people rather than watched live. So I wanted to. Um, to jump into Facebook Live today, mainly because we I've had um, a couple of people actually um, asking me some questions around getting cats. Now, there's been quite a in uptake of uh, adoptions during this time, mainly because uh, there's a lot of people working from home, which means that they've got time to actually spend with pets and things of that nature. Um, but I wanted to just go through some things that you need to consider when looking for uh, that perfect feline friend. Uh, feel free if you've got any comments to jump in and and um, let me know what you're thinking as well. And of course, I don't know everything. So if you've got uh, something that you want to add, please feel free to do so in the comments. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can actually come by a cat. You can either decide to get yourself a pedigree cat, cat and work out what cat's going to be best for you. You can adopt a rescue cat or you can inherit a cat. Now, at this point in time, there's probably not a lot of inheriting cats going on, so I won't talk about that too much. But basically, when you inherit a cat, it's because somebody that you know or love has actually had to go into some sort of care or whatever, and you've inherited their cat. Um, this can be a really great thing, but it can also, if you're not a cat person, not be the best thing in the world. So I'll talk about that on a different Facebook uh, Live at some stage. But today I wanted to talk about the difference between adopting and uh, a rescue and looking at pedigrees and what you should actually be looking for in both um, and how to actually introduce a cat into your household because that's really, really important to make sure that if you are bringing a cat home, um, they might not be as happy about it as what you are. So there's some tips and tricks that you can do to ensure that they're going to um, – be really happy and comfortable uh, at home. Now, I'm just going to move some stuff out of the way so I can see the comments because that's going to be really important. Um, hi, Carrie Ann, how are you going? <laughs> Love it. What's up, Pussycat? Brilliant. Um, all right, so let's talk first about if you're going to uh, be looking at bringing home a rescue cat, what are some of the things that you need to look at and consider? Now, rescuing a cat is probably uh, one of the most selfless things you can do. You're actually giving that animal another li uh, chance at life, which is fantastic. Um, it's not always the best option for every person though. Um, with pedigree cats, you do tend to know what their personality is going to be like. So if you're in a particular situation, it sometimes is better to get a cat that's going to be best for your situation rather than getting a, um, a rescue cat which may come with its own issues. And rescue cats definitely need just as much love and com compassion and as you can possibly give them. It can take time for them to actually come to you. And the important thing with all cats is that you can't make cats do something for you. You've actually got to find a way to allow the cat to do that in their own time. So patience is very, very important when it comes to adopting cats. There's lots of different places that you can uh, rescue cats from. Uh, there's a lot of cats, um, obviously, in the, the main areas of places like AWL and RSPCR and those things that you can go through. There's a lot of smaller cat rescue 
uh, places and you'll find a lot of those on things like Facebook and that type of thing as well. Um, there's, um, when you're actually looking for cats, just be very careful when you go looking on some of the advertised sites like Gumtree, particularly when you start to look for breeders because some of those breeders are not necessarily um, breeding for the right reasons. And if you're seeing them on Gumtree and the prices are awfully cheap, then they may be doing things for all the wrong reasons. So you do need to be a little bit careful if you're adopting uh, from um, places like Gumtree and that sort of thing. Really do your homework and have a good look at at um, where the cats have come from and that sort of stuff. Obviously, there'll be some great cats there and some of the best breeders will be advertising there as well. But just make sure that you do your homework a little bit on that one. Now, the, um, the important thing when you're looking for a pedigree cat is that um, you do need to decide what sort of cat's going to be right for you because all different, all pedigree cats are all different in different ways. So you need to do your homework to make sure that you're going to get a cat that's gonna be right for your lifestyle. So for instance, we have Abyssinians and we have domestics and we've got one Somali girl as well. And the Abyssinians and Somalis are very high energy cats. They actually need a lot of exercise they're very intelligent, so they have to have things that will play with their mind and, and that make them think and all that sort of stuff. Best cats in the world, but they are a little bit of high maintenance in that respect. But, um, they do get very naughty if they get bored, a bit like um, children, really. Um, so if, you're, if you have children, Abyssinians and Somalis are great because they are high energy. Um, but you wouldn't necessarily want an Abyssinian if you were an 85-year-old grandma, for instance. Um, so you need to actually look at what traits the breeds have and then decide what's going to work for you. Um, you need to consider whether or not you've got time to groom them. So if you are looking for some of the breeds that have all these wonderful uh, grooming and uh, long fur and that sort of thing. Have a look at what sort of grooming requirements they they have. Um, if you've got the time to groom them and you love the idea of grooming your cat, then fantastic. But that does need to be a consideration that you need to take into. Um, and the size of the cat as well. So whether or not you need to um, have bigger litter trays, for instance, if you're getting a Maine Coon, you might need to get bigger litter trays. Um, if you're um, an, an older cat, an uh, older person, of course, too, you may need to just consider the energy levels, um, maybe even go for an older cat that's already house trained, that type of thing. So there's lots and lots of different considerations that you can actually um, go through to when you're actually looking at adopting a cat. Now let's just have a little look at some of my um, notes here just so that we can uh, make sure I don't miss anything along the way. There we go, all right. Now, pedigrees also too, there's lots of really good um, websites that have quizzes. So you can go through some of these quizzes and it'll give you an idea of what the best cat breeds for you are. So everything from Burmese, which are uh, quite, quite often chatty. Um, they've got beautiful soft fur. They don't have a lot of grooming requirements. Um, they're pretty good with families uh, as well. So they're a pretty good all-round cat. Um, some of my other favourites are things like Russian Blues. They're quite, um, they're quite independent, so they re don't require quite so much uh, attention, uh, but they do like the attention when they, they want the attention. Um, so it, those are just some of the traits that you need to be looking for. And then you've got things like ragdolls, which are quite popular. And the ragdolls, of course, incredibly fluffy, so they're going to need some sort of uh, grooming uh, with that particular type of cat. Bengals are very popular at the moment as well. And I really like Bengals. I think they're fantastic cats. They're very much like Abyssinians though in the fact that they are very high energy. So they're good for families. Um, Abyssinians and Bengals, you would not want anywhere outdoors because they will kill wildlife everywhere. They are natural born hunters like the Abyssinians are. Um, so you have to sort of make, take all that sort of stuff into consideration. The space that you have in your house to look after your cat is one of the things that I'm really big on is making sure that you contain your cat. There's absolutely no reason for your cat to be wandering the streets. Um, you need to make sure that whether it's a rescue cat or whether it's a pedigree cat, no matter what sort of cat you've got, 
they need to be contained on your property. So you need to actually have a think about what you've actually got in the way of space for them to run around. Now, cats do sleep up to 16 hours a day. So it's not like they're running around the house all the time, but you do need to make sure that they've got enough space. And if you do have a high energy cat, then you may need to look at getting an outside cat area so that they've got a little bit of uh, fresh air and sunshine and watch the birds go by and things like that. And we've got a deck. Uh, we've got three, actually. We've got a side part of the house, a deck, and um, right down the back, we've also got a um, what we call the kitty castle. And if you want to have a look at what we've done, go to my YouTube channel because there's a, a video of that stuff on there and you can see what we've done. But the birds, uh, cats love sitting on our back deck this time of the day because it's beautiful and sunny and the birds are just on the lawn and they just hunt them from behind the cat net the whole time and they have a great time. So you do need to consider where you're going to house your cat and how you're going to keep them safe from all those nasty things that can happen out there. Now, I'm not a negative person, but it is really important that you do consider what can happen to cats when they go off your property, if you're going to let them out, because they can get run over. In the country, they can get eaten, bitten by snakes. Um, they can get, there's a lot of horrible people out there that do horrible things to cats as well. Uh, so the whole idea of containing your cat is about protecting them and making sure that they've got an environment that is really enriched that they're going to enjoy depending on the traits of that particular cat. So that's some of the things that you need to think about when you're going to be getting a cat. But what about when you bring them home? Now there's a number of things that you actually need to have when you bring them home. Um, you need to make sure obviously that you find out from whoever's looking after them currently what sort of food they have. Now if you want to change their diet when once they get home that's fine. But make sure you do it slowly because it can upset cat stomachs. If you change their diet overnight, they'll often end up with loose stools and things like that. So it's a good idea to have a good understanding of what their current situation is so that you can replicate that when they get home. And then if you want to make some changes to it, do it slowly over time. Um, food's an easy one because you can start off with what food they're currently on and what you want to switch them to. And then you just slowly mix it until you switch them over but you do need to be a little bit patient in that uh, respect as well. Now, cats obviously need water, but cats can some cats can be fussier than others as to what they drink out of. So it's a good idea to have water in a couple of different spots around the house rather than just having one, uh, one spot that they can get water from. Uh, cats do tend to like water bowls that are quite wide. They don't often like their whiskers touching the sides of their water bowls. So just keep that in mind as well. It's something that's you know quite wide and easy for them to, to get water from is good. Um, obviously litter, with their litter box is an important one as well. Now litter boxes are funny because the best thing about litter boxes is you can really uh, see what health your cat is by what's happening in their litter box. And again, go to YouTube. I've got a whole episode on YouTube all about that. YouTube.com forward slash cat mama will give you all the information on that one. Um, of course, you can get collars and harnesses and toys and all that sort of stuff for them. Um, cats must have a cat tree if you don't want them ripping up your furniture. And if you are even contemplating trying to work out a way to stop them from um, clawing things, then perhaps you're not the right person to be a cat mama or a cat daddy for that that. Um, matter but if you give them other options it's amazing how quickly they work out what they can claw and what they can't so cat trees big solid cat trees are really important um, in the climate that we have at the moment rather than go and order them and buy them overseas why don't you go on Facebook and see if there's any local manufacturers or there's a lot of um, people at home that make them so perhaps go on to some of your local cat groups or cat breeders may know who some of the local people are. Again, it's going to help the local economy um, if you can buy local. And you'll often find that some of the guys that build the, the cat trees locally do a fantastic job. If you have any issues with it, you can always um, get in contact with them as well. So that's some really important ones. Um, now, cats do occasionally scratch you. And if you get scratched by a cat, 
it's usually your fault. Uh, we do know though that cats can get really sharp claws and sometimes if they do, if you do pick them up or whatever, or if they're doing that kneading thing with really sharp claws, it can actually be quite painful. So it is really good to learn how to um, do your cat's nails just with some, uh, get some cat uh, nail clippers. It helps a little bit with the, um, uh, when you're picking them up, like I said, you know, and they happen to be on you, the chance of them um, accidentally scratching you because the claws are blunt, it's not going to give you that lovely paper cut style of uh, cat scratch that can happen sometimes with cats. So that's another thing to consider. Now, I also wanted to talk a little bit about um, enzyme odour neutralisers. Please pick it up. Oh, I can hear Bruce at the door. That's all right. I'll get to let him in on that. Um, enzyme odour neutralisers are really important with cats because if you clean up cat pee, if they happen to um, pee somewhere, or if you've got a you know, cat around the neighbourhood that's coming and peeing on your uh, front door, for instance, and you clean it up with something that's got ammonia in it, the cat's actually thinking, oh, the cat's been there, and I'll come back and pee on it. Whereas using an a enzyme-based uh, odour neutraliser, something like Truco or um, even BioZet, which is a, a washing powder, can help in this as well because it's got that um, enzyme formula in it. Um, it really does help to break the proteins down in the urine and that way the cats don't think another cat's been there and uh, it does help to stop them from peeing in your house. Now you might find if you're rescuing a cat that they might not be completely litter trained um, and quite often it's either a territorial thing or it's a fear thing as to why they're um, peeing in your house. There are some cats that just pee on your clothing because they want to mix their smell with yours and that's a whole other discussion. Um, so yeah, so that's some of the things that you're going to need for your cat. Now, when you bring home your cat, it's really important that you remember that they, they may not be as happy to be there as what you are. And you're the one that actually needs to be the, uh, the welcoming committee and allow them some time to settle in and do so um, fairly gently. You can't rush a cat. A cat will come to things in their own time. But there are some things that you can do that will definitely help uh, with that process of bringing them home. Now, cats like to feel secure. They don't like to just be out in the open where they're vulnerable. They like to be secure. So the first thing that you should do when you are bringing home a cat is actually make up an area that is going to be theirs. So whether you're using a, um, a animal crate that's theirs or whether you have them in a room where there's um, a space that is going to be theirs, it's really important not to push the come here and let me pat you type thing. So you need to give them some time. You'll be able to see when they start to come around. Um, first thing that you'll notice is when they first get there, you know how they get the wide eyes and it's all black. That's their eyes being dilated. You need to let them get to a point where their eyes are no longer dilated. You need to get them to a point where they're eating and weeing and pooing and doing all the normal cat things. You need to get them so that they're relaxed and not tense. So you want to try and get them to a point where they're relaxed before you take them to the next stage. And this is really important. If you rush a cat too quickly, it will set you backwards really quickly. So even when we have um, brought new kittens and that type of thing into the house, we've still done that process. Some of them, it'll be a longer process and some of them not so much. Um, now I've got a friend who's got a cat boarding cat, uh, a boarding at cattery, and she's taught me some amazing techniques in that regard because their cattery is one that's an open cattery. So once the cats are, are relaxed, they can come and socialise with the other cats. Um, and that's what they do there is that it, they give them time. So even once you get to the point where the cat is relaxed, then instead of forcing them out of their space, you just open the door and you let them come to you. Now, the other thing you need to, that's important with cats is that if you stare at them, it scares them. It's threatening to them. So it's really, really important to either not look at them directly in the eye and to do more of a side glance with them. Or the other thing, if you're going to look at them, do them with, so if I'm staring at a cat like this, that's scary. 
But if you're doing it like this, where you've got just your eyes slowly closed like that, and you just do the little slow blinks, that's actually more reassuring to a cat. In fact, it's a really good way of saying, I love you to your cat, because they often will do it back to you. If their eyes are wide like this, they're scared. If their eyes are hooded over a little bit, then you know that they're starting to relax and they're, they're calming down a little bit. So that's another really good trick, just the way that you actually stare at them. Now, the other thing is hands coming like this at them. That's scary stuff. So always move in a very slow manner so that it's not going to startle or scare the animal as well. Um, so you want them to feel safe and you want to give them plenty of time. Um, now, there's a few other tricks that you can use as well. There's a few products on the market which are really good. Um, this one here is Fellaway, and this is um, a excellent product. And I'll just read off the box here. It it's, uh, aids in alleviating signs associated with fear and stress in kittens and cats. And it actually does this because it's made of stuff that is uh, the same as the feline facial pheromone. So when cats smooge something, they actually leave a happy scent on the thing that they're actually smooging. It's a facial pheromone. And this stuff is a synthetic version of that. So it calms them. Now, if you're going to use it um, for a cat that you're bringing into the house, you really need to make sure that you give it a good spray and let it, uh, the alcohol that it's dispersed in, evaporate first, so maybe five minutes before you put it into that area. And then once you've actually um, are done that, then put the, the cat into that area. If the cat's already in the area, what you can do is actually get either a flannel or a piece of material or a cat toy or something like that and spray it on that first, again, leave it for five minutes or so, and then pop that into, um, into the, the space that you've provided for them. Another trick is to actually get a towel and spray it across the towel and then put it a front, in front of the cage that you may have them in so that that pheromone is actually getting to them. And that will help to de-stress them and it will drop the, the, um, the stress levels down considerably. Um, there's also some things on the market like um, tranquil treats and things of that nature. And they're great, but sometimes when a cat comes to you at first, they won't eat anyway. So some of those treats, although once they start to um, eat, is a good op option as well. Don't overdo it, um, but it is um, something that you can also look at. All right. So once they're feeling safe, <clears throat> and then you need to start to let them get to know some of the other family members. Now, whether that's um, allowing the family members into their space, particularly if you've got them in a cage, it makes it really easy because the other family members can come in. They're still going to feel safe in their little uh, space and then they can smell each other through the, through the cage and things like that. Again, doing it very slowly. Don't invite everybody in at once um, is really important. Letting the cat dictate how things go is really, 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 really important. Um, and that's kind of once you've get, got them to the point where they're, they're happy, then you just open up the door and then you let them start to um, explore a little bit. Now, if you have a multi-cat house like what we do, um, the important thing there is to do some scent swapping. So if you have two cats or you have a cat and you're introducing a new cat, then perhaps put a piece of material where your cat now sleeps and a material where the other cat sleeps and then swap them over. Um, once you've got one cat in one room that's happy in that room and the other cat has the rest of the house, then what you can do is actually swap them. Put the other cat and its cage or its, its space that you've created for it, perhaps move that out into one of the other areas and put the other cat into the area that that cat's been. So you're actually scent swapping and they can smell each other. Um, it's important for the new cat to get its scent into the main area because that area is going to be very much the territory of the current cat. So introducing them slowly, doing that scent swapping, um, even doing things like feeding them side by side is a good thing because then they, um, they feel that 
they can see happy things are happening when that other cat is there. Things like that can really, really help. So anyway, that's my um, chat for today. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to try and do a regular Facebook Live and answer some questions. So thanks. Leave me some comments and tell me if today's information was useful. Um, if you need all this information, you can go to my website, which is just catmama.com. And you can actually download this, which is the Becoming a Cat Mama download. Um, it's completely free. Um, it'll pop you onto my mailing list, so it'll ask for your email address. And it's got all the information that I've talked about in today is all in that, uh, that little handout PDF um, that's there. And you get instant access to it, so it makes it really easy. There's also some other really good uh, blogs on there. Uh, about adopting and whether you should go rescue and how to find a good breeder and all that sort of thing too. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.